Hey everyone, welcome back to Making Magical Adventures. In today's video, we're doing the day one for soft opening at Festival Holidays 2023. We could not be more excited. So in this video, we're gonna give you all the tips and tricks that you need to know before you come here to DCA for the Festival Holidays 2023. So let's get started. But before we get started with today's video, we noticed that 73% of you guys are not subscribed who watch the channel. So if you guys do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed and tap that notification bell to be notified when we do drop a new video. So let's get started. So for those of you who never heard of or attended Festival of Holidays, what it is, it's a big food and just a big party in general at Disney's California Adventure. So there's gonna be many booths with different foods and drinks from around the world and how they celebrate Christmas. So you'll experience Diwali, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. It's really awesome. You get to partake in other people's just holiday spirit. And I think that's something that's very special. They also have different performances like music, just a lot of fun things that you can do to just expand on the Christmas spirit. So let's get to it. So let's jump into talking about the Sip and Savor Pass. These are from years prior, but each Sip and Savor Pass comes with eight tabs that you can use towards food items or non-alcoholic beverages. If you choose to purchase it for non-Magic Key holders, we've heard it's $59 and $54 for Magic Key holders. Um, and as you have seen in our previous videos, when you have the tabs and you go to order your food, do not break off the tab until the cast member has told you to pull it off or else it's no longer valid. So then you're out of a ticket. When you're using your Sip and Saver Pass, if you already know all the food items or beverages that you would like to try, you can order those items at one of the booths and you can order for all booths, different foods. They'll give you a printout receipt and you just take that receipt to the remaining booth so you can try out all the foods that you wanna try. It makes it a little bit easier so that you're not having to you know, juggle with the tabs and it just gets out of control. Lastly, one thing I forgot to mention is there's lanyards for magic key holders, as you can see. There's this fun one, I believe this was from last year. For non-magic key holders, they'll just be giving you a plain lanyard, but I just think it's a nice little touch for you know the price you're paying for your magic key. So make sure you pick up your sip and saver pass and your lanyard. So next up is gonna be our map and our tasting passport. This one's from your Spryer. and Raylani had gotten to it, but this will tell you all of the activities, life performances, where you can locate your booths, so you wanna make sure you pick up your map as well as your Sip and Saver Passport. This is really fun because you can actually have them stamp at each booth all the foods that you have tried, kind of like a passport concept. And then it breaks down and gives you more information on the foods, its region, and what holiday you're celebrating. So this is always one of my favorite things to pick up. That way I'm a little more educated on what I'm celebrating and what I'm doing here. So make sure you pick it up. It looks like the Festival Holidays 2023 stage has been located over here next to the Hollywood Lounge, which kind of makes sense. Nicole and I were talking about it and we figured, you know, people can sit on the sides, get their drinks, eat their food, and enjoy some really good music. Now, every year they always have some incredible artists from all over come here to perform. So if you guys have never tried or seen these shows, or I should say performances, definitely make your way over here this year. And one thing to keep in mind, guys, if you are coming for Festival Holidays 2023, in today's video, since it is just a soft opening, I was actually able to talk with the chef and a few other cast members, and they said that everything for the festival specifically should be available, minus the brick and mortar places. That includes like the studio catering cart and other places like that. But still, if you are gonna come between today and tomorrow, and Friday obviously is the kickoff. There'll be plenty of foods for you guys to try. And the chef did tell us it's gonna be about 12 o'clock when the booths do actually open up today. And that's when we'll get grubbing. So another tip for festival of holidays, some seating arrangements in this general area. We're in the studio catering cart, Hollywood Lounge. There's quite a bit of tables. It seems like they're anticipating a lot of people to be here relaxing with the music. You can also sit by Mickey's Film Har Magic. There's also some seating there as well. And one last place you can find some extra seating is gonna be over there by Avengers Campus, right next to the Hyperion Theater. There's quite a bit of tables, so you should find a nice little spot to enjoy your meals and drinks. It looks like right across from the Spider-Man area, you can actually see that there is a Festival Holidays 2023 photo backdrop, but I'm actually assuming this is probably where you're gonna be able to meet a character or two. I'm not too sure who it's gonna be. Who do you think it's gonna be, babe? Or who do you hope it's gonna be? I mean, Goofy's always nice to meet. That's true. We'll see. But yeah, this is here today. 
right behind me you can see that there's another little addition to the festival of holidays there is a cart here specifically celebrating Diwali so they have some treats there are different little carts throughout the rest of the park that have like little offerings that they have such as like plants I've seen in the past or different food items so just make sure you check them out as it's a nice addition to the festival Sorry for the waterfall noise, but we just made our way out of Buena Vista Street and past Carthay Circle. Right behind me is where you can find the carts where you can purchase your Sip and Saver Pass that we were talking about. And there's also one place further in the park by Ariel's Undersea Adventure where there's usually a marketplace and you can also purchase your Sip and Saver Pass there as well in previous festivals. So just keep an eye out for these booths. Okay, we're making our way further and further into the park, but one thing I wanted to point out, on the top of each little booth, there's a little Mickey on top that says what booth is celebrating what. And that sounds like a tongue twister. There's a booth right here that has a Mickey Mouse that says it is celebrating Hanukkah and it matches the food item that they're serving. And each little Mickey is customized and I think they're so, so adorable. So right next to Ariel's ride, you guys can see like we talked about in a video back that here's where they're gonna set up everything for like merchandising and stuff like that. Typically in this one, there's like jewelry and stuff like that. But when you guys do come here, for sure by Friday, they're going to be set up. They're going to be selling some items for the festival holidays, which if we don't cover this week, we'll for sure cover next week. But we'll come back again tomorrow and see what they have as well. So a nice addition here to the wharf area is the little lantern that's decorated for festival holidays. It looks like a little Christmas tree and I absolutely love it. I cannot wait to come to experience DCA at nighttime with all the beautiful lights and the music and just the cheerfulness of it all. Right across from Merry Mashups, we have another fun area where you guys can come and take pictures. And here's one big spot that for media, usually they have people come over here and there's also a lot of people who actually perform as well. So this is kind of like the second stage, so to say. And they have a really cool area right here on the ground. I've actually never seen this before, but anyways, here is another fun backdrop. If it is open, you and your family can come over here and take a picture with this as well. So it's getting close to us getting ready to eat and we're making our way back to the very front in Hollywood Studios. But something I wanted to point out really quick, before heading into the rest of the work area, right here by the bread tour area, they have now added some more tables and chairs, which is nice because there are some booths right here and usually we're struggling trying to find seating. So it's so it's nice that now they have some more seating options available. And one thing to kind of piggyback off what Nicole was talking about, it's actually really nice to see that now for this holiday, they have a lot more seating options because we're pretty much walking, we're seeing a lot more. And I think that's really nice because like she said, it is a struggle when you have all this food, there's a lot of people and you just can't find seating. And then you end up just kind of eating your food randomly somewhere. And I feel like that also affects the thought of how your food tastes. Um, but anyways, let's make our way to the very front. Okay, so we're in the Hollywood Studios area, just kind of lounging and trying to find a little table where we could review the food when they finally open. This time change has me a little jacked up because I thought it was time for the foods to start rolling out and it was only like 10.47 and they said that they're starting at about 12. So I can't wait to start eating. I am definitely, definitely hungry. So our first booth is going to be holiday duets and a returning item that we're giving another shot this year is the Esquites Mac and Cheese. So this has carnitas on top and the corn that makes the escapist part. So I'm so excited to dip in. Hopefully this is just broth and not oil um, sitting on the outside of the tray here. But let's get our first bite here. So it looks like they're using freeze dried corn and not fresh corn, um, which I don't think I mind too much, but let's see how the texture all plays in. First bite. Okay, so the mac and cheese tastes more like on the grandma side than like cheesy per se. I don't mind it because it's actually something I kind of grew up eating when I was younger. There is a pretty nice kick to this. Spice level, I would say it's probably like a, maybe like a 2.5 out of 5. It's not too spicy, but you definitely get that peppery taste in the back of the throat. I'm very happy that this is a returning item and I would probably give this a 4 out of 5. Wow, yeah, there's definitely a spice to this thing, but like Nicole said, it's more of like a peppery spice. It is really, really delicious. I'm glad that we're actually eating our foods right away instead of letting them sit for a while, just because I feel like with especially mac and cheese, it's gotta be warm. 
and honestly all the flavors are there the carnitas on top allows it to be like pretty juicy and tender so overall my opinion too i would definitely get this one if you guys are coming for festival holidays 2023 also from holiday duets we have the new tart that's out this is a new chocolate twix tart there is like a cookie based tart with chocolate mousse it looks like there's also maybe a caramel drizzle in there to give that twix effect there's twix candy bar pieces and sprinkles or sugars as Rayloni likes to say so i can't wait to dig in i definitely could use something sweet all right here we go i'm excited for that chocolate mousse I love this. For some reason, this like transported me back to like elementary school. Maybe it was like the chocolate mousse, like if they had that at school at one point. I just love that little memory that it added. And all the flavors are there. The mousse texture is perfect. I like the crunchy bits of the Twix, being that it's like one of my favorite candy bars. So with that being said, this gets a five out of five. Wow, that is really, really good. I love how it's chilled. Like Nicole said, the mousse inside is perfect. I love the toppings. I love sprinkles. I love Twix. All together, this thing comes together really nicely. And um, the crust on this Twix tart makes it. I really feel like that little bit of crunch just makes this thing pop. So try it out. Okay, so our second booth was gonna be Grandma's Recipes and we were gonna try out that barbacoa tamal with the green tomatillo salsa. However, the booth had it closed for whatever reason today. And I'm really bummed out because that was the one I was most excited for. Um, but we still got some really good options since we pre-ordered the rest of our meals. So we're gonna get walking and get all this food in our belly. So now it's time to head to favorite things inside of this little cove area. So don't forget guys, there's another booth here. So from favorite things, we're gonna give the pork belly adobo another try. It looks like we're getting a pretty big piece. However, I do feel like it might be a little bit on the fattier side, but let's just take our bite and see where we go from here. Gonna get a little bit of everything. All right, there we go. So I would say that it like melts in your mouth, but almost not in a good way. It is a little bit on the fattier side. So that's what's making this tender. Um, Flavor-wise, I think the flavor is great. I just think the cut of meat that we were provided wasn't the best. So I think sadly I would have to give us a two this year. So a new item that they have is this fun looking macaron here. Now this macaron was inspired by the new Disney Plus Santa Claus season two uh, show that they have going on. I was trying to think of my thoughts there. I actually really am a huge fan of the show. Now this is a chocolate mousse uh, macaron. It has peanut butter and pretzels. Definitely things that, you know, Scott Calvin would be eating. So let's dig in. Okay. Oh, it's already breaking. And Ray Lonnie is going to eat the little chocolate on top. I'm gonna break this in half. I didn't quite get the like pretzel part. Gosh, this is so messy. Look at that peanut butter there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is very peanut buttery. I do like how these flavors come around. It's not giving Reese's Cup vibes, which is like funny because you think chocolate and peanut butter. I think this one would get like a 3.5 out of 5. It's just kind of like right in the middle there for me. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try this out. It does look like there's just like a huge glob of like peanut butter in there, but I don't know, let's try it out. Oh, it's peanut butter and pretzels inside. So with this one, it is very chocolatey, almost too chocolatey in my opinion. There is tons of peanut butter inside. So if you are a fan of peanut butter and chocolate, this might be your go-to. I feel like with these bigger macarons, it's kind of like that, like where you have to like just take one bite and take the rest home. So maybe bring a Ziploc bag for this one. Unless you're feeling froggy, you could probably finish it here. Okay, so from Making Spirits Bright, I'm already so happy as you can see. We're gonna be trying the new Tiramisu Yule Log Drink. This is a 21 and over drink. If you're using a Sip and Saver Pass, you cannot use your Sip and Saver towards alcoholic beverages. So let's give it a try. Right off the bat, I love the chocolate shavings. I'm a chocolate girl. I could definitely eat this whole entire topping. Let's dig in. I think this is very smooth. Definitely has those coffee essence of like a tiramisu. Um, so it must have a coffee liqueur of some type. Um, I will definitely be finishing this off and all the chocolate shavings and the ice. This whole thing will be gone. I highly recommend this if you are a tiramisu coffee lover. Cheers. Ooh, very smooth. Normally what I feel like with Disney drinks, they're like really, really potent with the alcohol. This is delicious. It's like you're drinking a dessert, if that sounds about right. And I'm sure it has a kick. Usually Disney drinks 
have a nice kick to it. The chocolate shavings on top, I feel like make this drink as well. It also gives it a little bit of creativity in my opinion. I would probably get this again. So next we're gonna go in for the Impossible Curry Bites. I always love trying the Impossible dishes that they offer. I think it's a nice touch and it's inclusive to everybody. So I'm so, so excited. It smells really good right off the bat. So let's go in. It kind of looks a little bit like a chicken nugget, which is making me laugh, like chicken nugget with pesto. That's not it at all, but here we go. All right, here's our bite. Amazing, amazing. It has a nice crunch. The green, um, I think it's like a chinchuri of some sort. Whatever that green drizzle is on here, has a nice little tang to it. And then that cream is really creamy and kind of blends everything together. I will be getting this again for sure. This is a five out of five. Great job on bringing a new dish to us. So just finished up with these booths. Now we're gonna make our way down more to the Pacific Wharf area. Honestly, so far, Festival Holidays 2023, you're spot on. So great job to all the chefs who worked really hard and all the cast members who are making this magic happen. But let's go try some more food. So from a twist on tradition, we have a new food item here. Now this one I do know is celebrating Hanukkah because I have made it at home with Henry's mom. So this is gonna be the savory kugel mac and cheese. So this has a sour cream base, chives and breadcrumbs um, with some herbs, breadcrumbs I should say. So let's take our first bite here. It smells very like creamy, very like earthy from those herbs. There's a lot of dairy in a couple of these mac and cheese, so if you are lactose, make sure you take something for your poor little bellies. Here we go. Okay, so the texture is really cool. There is that soft little noodle bit to that, and then you get the crunchy bits from the breadcrumbs and the kugel take on this. Um, very creamy. Uh, it does kind of taste like you're eating like sour cream and chive dip pasta is what I would say, um, but I actually really do enjoy this. I would give this a four out of five. All right, let's see. It's gonna be battle of the mac and cheeses. So <laughs> second one, here we go. Oh. With this dish, it's very, very creamy. I think the breadcrumbs on top is what makes this dish like perfect. I didn't really think to put like breadcrumb or anything like on my mac and cheese, but it's nice to have the creaminess and the crunchy. I would probably get this again. I think it would be really nice for like a cold night as well. So I'm having to make a quick pit stop inside of Cars Land and boy, is it dressed up really nice for the holidays. I have to charge my phone, so let's go ahead and swap this. Okay, something new from Merry Mashups that is kind of like defeating the purpose. It's hot outside, but we got the new hot cocoa here. So this is Santa's Milk and Cookies Hot Cocoa. This is inspired again from the Santa Claus show that is now streaming on Disney Plus. So let's take our first sip. It is pretty hot. My hand is hot. So here we go. Ah, oh, that's hot. Okay, so that hot chocolate was extremely hot. I do feel like you want hot chocolate. You want it to be that hot, but I almost feel like I prefer it like at a drinkable kid's temperature, but I'm sure at night that's gonna be really amazing when it starts to definitely cool down. It does have that nice cookies and cream taste. I definitely got that from after the burn, um, but it tastes like a melted down Oreo basically in a cup. So I really enjoy that. I will probably get it again, but at night when it's actually cold, finally, not this weird hot weather. Okay, let's see how hot this hot chocolate really is. Yep, that's hot. <laughs> um, but like Nicole said, it pretty much does taste like a melted down Oreo or anything that you tried in the past that actually tastes like cookies and cream. This is exactly what you're getting, just in a hot chocolate form. I think this is really fun. Definitely worth getting again, probably at a colder night. And right now it's definitely still not sweater weather here in Southern California. It's still a bit warm. So hopefully in the next month or so, we'll probably try this again and see if it tastes any better with the cool weather. All right, sorry for the noise, but it's a nice break from everything else that's going inside the park. So we made our way back here towards Grizzly River Run and you can find Winter Sliderland tucked back here in the corner. So we're gonna try the new Toragashi chicken karage sandwich. I thought this was just like a miniature scale version of what you could already get at San Francisco. However, we did talk to one of the chefs and they did say that this is a different spin on the sandwich and they just want to include San Francisco into this new festival here. So I thought that was a really nice little sentiment. 
But right off the back, the presentation looks really nice. I like how the chicken um, looks really crispy and that slaw just looks placed perfectly. It's not messy at all. So that makes me really excited to try this. <laughs> and Raylani wanted to show her she uh, ate her, her <laughs> meat that she had. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's take our first bite here. All right. For that being a tiny little slider, it is packed with a lot of flavor. It's hot? <laughs> Drink your milk, mommy. <laughs> so for that being a tiny slider, it is packed with a lot of flavor. The textures all came together perfectly. I'm like in love with this little slider and that slaw at the very end had a nice little crunch to it so you know that they're using as fresh as ingredients as they can get. And Raylani really wanted a bite of this so here we go. What do you think Raylani? Is it good? Yeah? Uh oh. <laughs> it's good. Mmm there it is. So this definitely oh there's still. Bye! <laughs> This definitely gets a 5 out of 5. Dale just walked by so very lucky found girling over here. <laughs> Make sure you add this to your list. It was definitely delicious. I am so excited for this as the sliders are probably my favorite thing for every holiday festival. So let's see if this one lives up to it. Wow, this is really, really delicious. And I highly recommend this one right away. If you've had the one in San Francisco, it's kind of like the same thing. But honestly, I feel like this one is better. Um, um, it's really, really crispy. I really love the coleslaw. The bun is just perfect. And I don't know, I think this might be the best dish here for Festival Holiday 2023. Dang, you guys gotta try this one. All right, sorry again, guys, for the noise. I hope it's okay, but like I said, it's just a nice little break from everything happening in the park. Our last item here is going to be the brisket beef slider with peppers and onions on a brioche bun. And this is a returning item. I believe this was Henry's favorite thing last year. So I'm excited to dig right into it again. And this is one that I feel like if you're not using a sip and saver pass and you're paying out of pocket, it's a good bang for your buck because they really load this bad boy up. So let's get our bite in here. So I really enjoyed this one this year. I think last year I said that it was like kind of tough and harder to eat and I just felt like it was all in my teeth. This year I feel like it's very tender. The bread was cooked nicely. I really have no complaints on this. Um, I just wish that the onions and peppers had like a little bit more of a crunch than like a soft saute to it. But overall I think this gets a 5 out of 5. Let's see if this lives up to how it was last year. Dang it looks so good though. Alright, first bite. Wow. Disney, you guys knocked it out of the park. Thank you to all the chefs who made this just perfect this year. I think what Nicole said too is last year, we kind of liked it. Like it was really delicious, but I feel like they revised something and it just made this so spectacular. The bun I think is a little bit better this year. It's a little thinner than it was last year. And I think that's what made it taste really nice because last year it just felt like it was all in your teeth and everything like that. This time around, it's perfect. There is so much meat packed in this one. And if you guys are gonna only get one or two items, I would highly recommend getting them from Winter Sliderland. So right behind me is the Redwood Creek area. Whew, I don't feel that term of student come a little bit. Whew. But anyways, right behind me is where you can meet Santa for the Christmas season. Last year we got to take Raylani for the very first time. It was so magical and such a great experience. It truly put a smile on all of our faces. So if you got little ones or if you're just a big kid at heart, Make sure you make time to come and see Santa. All right, everyone. So that pretty much wraps up our Festival Holidays 2023 soft opening video. There are a few items that we did not try in today's video, but don't worry. Throughout the rest of the holiday season here at the Disneyland Resort, we will be trying more, especially with Friday kicking off with tons of new foods, tons of new things that are going to be here and available. But with all that being said, if you guys did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed and tap that notification bell to be notified when we do drop a new video. And like we always say, may you always have magical adventure. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.